I see that you enjoy Nintendo games. Shinjiro Miyamoto is one of the world's most respected game designers in the world. Called the Walt Disney of video games, his games are known for having simple controls, innovative gameplay, and simple storylines, which is a sharp contrast compared to story driven games like Final Fantasy. He has been criticized for in intentionally delaying many of his games until they were perfect. He was the first person to be inducted into the Academy of Interactive Arts and Science Halls of Fame in 1998. The first to receive the stars on the Walk of Game in San Francisco, inducted as a knight in France, he was chosen as one of the 100 Time Magazine's most influential people in 2007 and 2008, and received a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2007's Game Developers Choice Awards. How did this all start? Shinjiro Miyamoto grew up in a rural area of Kyoto, Japan. Without any television, he relied on his wild imagination to entertain himself. He was into art such as drawing and painting. He would often explore the wonders of the natural world, like the rice fields, canyons, grasslands, and waterways. Many of these explorations gave way to his idea of creating a world called Hyrule or Kirby's Dreamland. A fierce neighborhood dog with a chain attached to a post was a nightmare that would later be seen in Mario's enemy called the Chain Chop. The plants in a garden would give birth to creation of pigment. One of the most vivid Im images from Miyamoto-san's childhood came from a large hole in the, in the ground. Shinjiro Miyamoto's adventure in the hole to find a cave of wonders. Armed with only a flashlight, he traveled deeper into the mysterious caves to find other sections of the cave. We can see illusions of these early adventures to Mario venturing down a warp wall or Link finding the dungeon. It is also found in Miyamoto's philosophy, what a great game is. I think it has to do with balance. My formula for success is that 70% of the game should have to do with objectives and the rest should be secrets and exploration. For the world to benefit from these early childhood memories, our story leads us to a card company called Nintendo. Nintendo started as a small Japanese business by Fujiro. Yarumichi, near the end of 1889, the handmade playing card game called Hanafuda soon became popular in Japan. Nintendo itself means leave luck to the heavens. Nintendo would later on do cards for Disney so they could market the gambling game and market it as a family oriented game. With such momentum, Nintendo tried to expand into other areas such as taxi cabs, a love hotel chain, and instant rice. They were all failures except for their toy division. Still, Nintendo had heavy competition from Bandai and Tommy. Fortunately, Nintendo's saving grace came from, of all things, a mechanical engineer from Nintendo's assembly line, Gunjibi Yokoi, who later on in history go on to create the Game Boy, the Virtual Boy, and the Metroid series. He was noticed by the president of Nintendo at the time after seeing him play with an extended arm that he had created for his own enjoyment. He will go on to develop many toys such as the Love Tester and the Beam Gun game, enabling him to become head of R&D. Miyamoto, having completed his degree industrial design, worked in Nintendo as a staff artist since his father was good friends with the company's president. It is there that Tokyo san would mentor Miyamoto and teach him everything he knew about business. At this time in the US, video games were gaining mass popularity in arcades and computers with games such as Ping Pong, Space Invaders, and Pac-Man. In Nintendo, they tried to get into the business of video games as well. Their first big shot was with a game called Radar Scope, which was a big hit in Japan, but yet the success was very short. Unfortunately, the US lost interest in the game before it was, it was even produced in the arcades in the US market. Still, Nintendo had a contract that required them to deliver a large order of arcade machines. Nintendo president therefore ordered Miyamoto to redesign the Radar Scope software game. But rather than using the same game, Miyamoto created an entirely new game altogether from the Radar Scope game that would be known as Donkey Kong. The game became an overnight success at the arcades in the US and introduced the world to Mario and Donkey Kong. Miyamoto states, Back when we made Donkey Kong, Mario was just called Jumpman. He was a carpenter. 
That's because the game was set in a construction site, so it made sense. When he, we went on to make the game Mario Bros, we went on to use pipes. Maybe a sewer was in the game in New York, so he became a plumber. For Donkey Kong, I wanted something with Kong, which kind of gives the idea of apes in Japan. And I came up with Donkey Kong, because I heard Donkey meant stupid, so I went with Donkey Kong. Unfortunately, I said the name too, in front of America. Nobody liked it. And said it didn't mean stupid ape. They all laughed at me. But we went along with the name anyways. Miyamoto and Yokio would go on to create more games, such as Mario Brothers and the Game & Watch series. Nintendo entered a third console generation with Famicom, a family computer, that enabled Miyamoto to create Super Mario Bros. and established Nintendo as a powerhouse. The USA at the time was going through a video game crash in 1983. It looked like North America would never see Super Mario Bros. It was until Tokyo created Rob the Robot to market the Nintendo Entertainment System as a toy. The tactic worked and saved the video game industry in the United States from annihilation. Nintendo would enjoy much success from its infamous franchise, such as The Legend of Zelda, Kirby, Metroid, and others, as they entered the console wars. Miyamoto and Nintendo first entered the 3D realm on the Super Nintendo with Star Fox. This game used the Super FX chip that rendered 3D polygons. The game itself was a flight shooting simulation game that starts Fox Wakanda is wingmen as they try to save the Lilac system from Andros. Only a few other games used the FX chip including Stunt Race FX. And Super Mario World 2. The game's sequel, Star Fox 2, had improved FX technology but never saw the light of day since it was cancelled before its release. Though Nintendo was still holding its own against Sony and Sega with the Super Nintendo, they wanted to fully enter the 3D gaming realm with Project Reality, also known as